The following series contains opinions from paid professionals. The information provided in this video is general in nature and not advice. For free and confidential support, call 1800 858 858 or visit www.gamblinghelpline.org.au. Hello and welcome to the final episode of Grace and Gators Cup Countdown. Why is it the last time? Because the Melbourne Cup is tomorrow, Gator. We are finally here. It's upon us at last. And uh, as we've sort of been thinking, the landscape's been changed. It's been a roller coaster, hasn't it, all the yes. way through? A couple of the top end of the market, some world-class athletes aren't there. But let's focus on who is here. It's still our greatest race. And there's some still elite world class talent in this field. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned the fact that it has been a roller coaster in particular just over the last couple of yeah. days. I mean, the landscape itself has changed so much in, sh in such a short space of time. But that's all under the water, mm. under the bridge now, because we've got the final field. It's all about trying to find out who the winner is. So as we take a look at what the final field does look like, 24 runners, fantastic. Hopefully we get that full field to face the starter. In terms of those, that add a lot of intrigue. There's lots of different stories. Chris Waller, mm. um, he's got some key chances, doesn't he? We've got jockeys having their first ride in the race. In my opinion, something I'm looking forward to is there's a couple of key hopes that are having their second attempt at the Melbourne Cup, which in recent years has been a very good recipe mm. to winning. Now, that's a good point you make. And uh, obviously the, the top of the, uh, that tree, I think, is Willie Mullins' pair, isn't it? Yep. Loban and Absurd, who inverted commas failed in the race last year, but they've come up with a myriad of excuses why they underperformed. Both horses probably going better this year as well. I think that's a really, really good point. So that's the final field, the makeup of it in terms of what we need to work out is how the race is going to be run mm. and won. Now, obviously it's a Melbourne Cup yep. and anything can happen. But for me, the speed map and tactically trying to work out who's going to be in the winning position yep. is key. So how do you think it sets up? Yeah, it's a challenging one because the race shape of this great race over the years, you go back and look, you you saw a fast run race, the very elegant one, but it was pretty on pace dominated. Yep. Twilight Payment set a strong speed and kept on running. Whereas last year, they went hard, you know, some nine lengths above group one average, and it was a run ons race. The <laughs> first six home were all out the back at the 500 meter mark. Probably makes Absurds run a little better than what it looks. So i um, expecting it to be less fierce than last year, which won't be difficult, <laughs> but just finds a logical leader. But because he's a query at the trip, I don't think he's going to go overly hard. Same. Mm. I think that's a really good point. He's the one that everybody expects to take up the field, but don't expect for him to go and set a cracking tempo. A couple of the other horses like Akita Sushi, I think mm. will press forward yep. and end up in the perfect spot. I think he's almost the map horse of the whole race, probably gets the 1-1. One, one. But those horses drawn low, um, you know, the Zardozis, the, the Sea Kings, I don't think that they're going to make the leaders work. I think mm. they'll be happy to hand up and that just adds to the fact that I don't feel like it's going to be a high pressure race. Yeah, I think you're right. And, and those couple of horses you mentioned, they've been over racing a little bit. Yeah. So the last thing though, connections or jockeys probably want to do is fire them up out of the gates and get them over racing. At the end of a marathon, that can really tax you as we as we know. So I think there's some um, certainly key winners out of the barrier draw. For yep. me, Akiti Sushi is one of them. Do you have one that springs to mind that you think is, is the map horse of the race? Yeah, I think C King's the one who can fall asleep from gate one and probably be sixth or seventh inside, just getting that lovely trail off of what we think will be a below group one average tempo. So um, look, he's got a few mates that have drawn well, a couple, of not, a couple of others not so well, but that's the nature of the race. Well, this is a really good segue because getting to our top four now, we'll go through the horses that we've landed on and those that we think have got a really good winning chance in the great race. And Buckaroo is where we start because this mm. is your on top selection. How do you feel about barrier 21? Look, I wouldn't have picked it. It wouldn't have been my uh, my first pick, but um, he's an off midfield with cover horse anyway. So uh, it's a long run, as we well know, to the first turn. Joe Marrera has got a rough idea what he's doing. So yes. it, it hasn't deterred my confidence greatly, a little bit. And, you know, mm, probably yep. gone from an eight to seven and a half out of 10, but I think he brings in the best last start performance. Yep. He's running the Caulfield Cup, was I thought the run of the month till Via Sustina came along and turned into Farlap in the Cox Plate. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna stick with that. Will he run the trip? Well, I'll tell you straight after the race. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing to suggest that he won't mm. run the trip because he was so strong to the line. Yep. Um, so I, I agree he's got a great winning chance. I just query as to how
how far back he gets. Yeah. But out of that same Caulfield Cup, um, a horse that I really like at a price is Land Legend, and he probably gets back as well. I think the key to this horse's chances from Barrier 18 is for Zach Purton to actually put him to sleep, yep. like be so quiet, so conservative out of the barrier, um, because the biggest problem for him is that he gets so fierce and so keen mm -hmm. in the run. But Chris Waller is a master, and he's got earmuffs in the race going on for the first time. So Zach, with that race experience aboard him, I think there's lengths of improvement in Land Legend and what we've seen in this preparation if he can settle, so if he can settle, mm. I think he's in with a massive chance. Yeah, you've been in his corner for a while, but it's the same issue, isn't it? Uh, that, that keenness, and yep. it can really be costly at the end of a marathon, but he's in the right hands. I mean, Very Elegant was a problem child. Yes, um, Chris she was. Waller got her to relax and, and was a brilliant winner of this great race. So I think I agree with you, he's a clear winning hope. Yeah, I think he'll be really strong at the end of the 32 as well. Who else is in your... Who else are you thinking is in contention? Yeah, so I've got Bucker on top, but Vauban, I think, is a big danger. Had real trouble splitting them. Uh, he comes off a 2.3 length second at Kiprios. Yep. I mean, his win prior to that was terrific, and the horse came out that he beat there came out one by eight in, in a listed race, so his form's world class. And they keep saying, we got it wrong last year for this, that, and the other reason. So I'm giving him another go. Absurd was a sneaky good run in this race last year. He peeled out a long way from home in a fast run race and was only the last 200 that he knocked up. He's, he's going better, I think, this year than last year. And Land Legend, my fourth pick. So that's my top four. I'll definitely take a trifecta at first four with a tab because it'd be un-Australian not to. I'd be un-Australian <laughs> not to. And you know what? Put as many as you want in there. Sure. Box them up. Try and get Percentage. some sort of a, a dividend there. Um, in terms of what rounds out my first four, I think Akita Sushi, as you have been saying this whole time on this show, you need to be in form and yeah. you need to be coming off almost a career peak rating, coming off a massive last start run. Akita Sushi she fits that mold for me. He wasn't bad in the race last year. He's clearly going better now. Mm. Kira Ma is another trainer that you just put all yep. the trust into for a race like this. So um, he maps perfectly. He can be just in behind what we're thinking isn't going to be a high pressure race in terms of the speed. So I think Akita Sushi's in for third for mine. And one smooth operator, I really like interpretation. He's in my top seven. Mm. One smooth operator gave him windburn last yeah. start off the plane and probably has improvement now out to 3,200 metres. So yep. to summarise, Gator, what is your top four? All righty, let's go. Uh, number two, Buckaroo on top for the reasons outlined, outstanding in the Caulfield Cup. Number one, Vauban. Number nine, Absurd. Number eight, Land Legend. I've got too many numbers in my head at the moment. <laughs> I, I can't reel off numbers, but what I can tell you is names and confidence levels. Sure. Number one for me is, on top for me, I should say, is Vauban ahead of Land Legend at a price. I've then got Akita Sushi, the map horse of the race, and in for fourth, the progressive one smooth operator. So with that in mind, everybody, take your exotics, take your first fours and your trifectas and gator. Hopefully we've got the winner somewhere in the mix that we've just mentioned. That's the plan. And as I say, have a bit of fun with it. Um, enjoy the, the day. Trifectas first fours uh, on the tab app, the great way to play the race and have a bit of fun with you. Well, we've had a lot of fun. We have. On Grace and Gator's Cup Countdown. We hope you've enjoyed this episode as we have the whole season. Chances are you're about to lose. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.